On the banks of the River Tay lies Perth, Scotland. This fair city is the gateway to the Highlands and is home to the World Scotch Pie Champion for 2015, Murray's Bakers. My GRCC culinary students, April and Megan, were here in Perth as well. We had the amazing opportunity to learn from Linda, the owner of Murray's Bakers, about what it takes to make a world champion Scotch pie. Thank you very much, Linda, for allowing us to come into your bakery. It's wonderful for our girls to come and see how to make a good Scottish pie. You're very welcome. But tell us first about Murray's Bakers. Certainly, Murray's the Bakers has been on the go now for over 114 years. Um, it was my great granddad that started Murray's, so I am now the fourth generation. My granddad came from Glasgow with a shilling in his pocket and started up the business. At that time, they did outside catering as well as they had a tea room and all the, the bakery stuff. Uh, we sell a lot of pies every week. You're talking between six and 8,000 pies a week. And, and alone. you are an award-winning pie We are an award-winning producer. Yes, we are the World Scotch Pie Champion 2015, which was Whoa. absolutely <laughs> amazing to win. Thank you very much. It was a great, great day. Loved it. And everybody in Perth has always went on about Murray's Pies. We're an institution in Perth. It's all people will talk about. And if you ask anybody where to go in Perth for a pie, they'll say Murray's. And the bakery manager is going to show us how to make yes, the pies. Yes, he's going to. Uh, we make our pie. pies from scratch. We make all our pie shells. We season the filling to our secret recipe. They're baked here. They're sold in the shop. And I think that's what makes ours so special as well, because they're actually made and sold on the premises. Now, you can't beat that. You can't yeah. get any fresher than that. No. And that's the best way to eat a Murray's pie. It's very personal. Right out the oven, in the street. Munch and tip. Let's go on, let's go and make some. <laughs> It all starts with the pie shell. Colin, the bakery manager, went to work showing us how he makes the dough. Thank you for taking the time, Colin, to show us how to make this pastry. It's a very it's special all. dough, though, isn't it? It's is very, very special, yes. What we've got in here is um, lard and fat, salt and pepper. And what, what, what happens now is we put it in boil, put water in it and boil it up. Okay. Um, and when it's all boiled, it's really liquid, it's really, really hot. Then mm -hmm. we put it in the, the mixer. Then with our flour and then we make our pie shells. Yeah. So then we cut it up and make it into wee balls. Now that is just like a hot water paste. So it's, it's soft. A dough. It's a dough. Yeah. It's a dough. So it's soft. Yeah. But it's warm all the time very you're warm. working with it. It's very hot. Yeah. And if it does cool down, it starts to crack. Yeah. yeah it goes hard. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's really hard. Very special that you catch it at the right time. Yeah. What happens then once we take the the, the, the dough out of the machine? Uh, like I said, it goes down in balls. So you take your ball and you put it on um, the die here, and this goes round. So the, this die here, it, it presses down on it, and it makes it into a shell, which is like that. This one here cuts the rim round it. And this is just a wee rim. And the, the, the dies are hot, aren't they? The dies are very hot, yeah. So the dies are kind of almost like baking them in that shape. Yeah, yeah. They're making it as well. And it's a hot dough with a hot, hot die. So it's keeping it... Uh, and then that just pops them right out? That just pops them right out, yeah. And because that, because that kind of almost seals them, they stay that shape? They do, yeah. Well, as soon as they come out of here, that's the shape they are, and they're still soft. Perfect. And then we fill them. And, and while that was in there, was that hot? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't yeah. think it's hot. That's my <laughs> But that thing's, like, red hot. Yeah. You're in. Yeah. I will be next Monday when Mike Byrne fixes. After the shells are ready, it's time for the filling, a secret recipe here at Murray's. In here we've got our, our mince, our seasoning, um, and a secret recipe, which um, it's only a few people that know, and only a few people are getting to know, yes, and I'll get shot. Exactly, it's all under lock and key. Yeah. <laughs> when, once that's all mixed in, um, what happens, we just fill it up, and we've got a, a scoop that, um, scoops into the, the shell and it gives us the same amount in every shell every time and once they're all filled I'll hand it over to Linda and she shall put the lid on. And then obviously there's a minimum meat recommendation you have to have in every scotch pie so every pie has to have at least 17% of the whole product is your beef so 
all the meat that in, is in this pie is beef mince, but it's only a certain percentage is the beef because the rest of it obviously is our seasoning, our shell, our lids, mm -hmm. you know, our secret ingredients, things like that. But it is all proper beef mince that's in it mm -hmm. that we get from Lindsay's The Butchers. Thank you, Colin. So we've got our pie lids here from our pie lid dough. They're all separated with the rice flour, so that stops them sticking when they're in the chiller. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're going to use them, you just give them a wee shake, get some of the rice flour off. You'll notice they've all got a little hole in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. So this little hole is when you lid it, right? So you're putting it in, lidding it round, the heat can escape when they're in the oven. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't bubble mm -hmm. the lid back up. So we're going to lid some of these pies. So you've got to make sure that they're sealed around the edge as well, because otherwise the lid will come off when it's in the oven. OK, so I'll just do a few of these to let you see. Give it a good shake so it's not all covered in rice flour. OK, now we would normally do this whole tray. Then what we do is we have a wee scoop of water on the top, and that's a wee trick of the trade here for us as well. That's so you're not drying out your lid when you're cooking it oh. because you don't want it to be hard and crusty. Just a wee scoop on top. Is that a big scoop, Link? No, it's a little <laughs> Just, Oh, are you meaning because a wee, that's a, like, a word that you wouldn't use in America, yeah, a little. Might be different. Ah, right, a little scoop. And that's little now ready for the oven. Yeah, so then they would be ready for going in the oven. OK. I'm cooking with Angus. All right, girls, here we go. A hot Scottish pie. So in here, there's lungs, hearts, and livers. GRCC. Why? Because what you learn in two years lets you transfer to a university at the top of your game. Because what you save in tuition is worth thousands of dollars. Because the hands-on learning and academic support are second to none. Because the honors program challenges you to do your best, while student life makes you feel connected to the world. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I love GRCC because I love Grand Rapids. I chose GRCC because it's close to home. I can take my time to decide what I want to do with my life. I love this campus because it's an affordable way to take basic classes. I chose GRCC because it was the best place to get reacquainted with school. Because I love being downtown. Because it's military friendly. So I can pursue my dream of being a dental hygienist. Because it offers the same educational experience as universities. My GRCC students and I are visiting Murray's Bakers, learning how to make their world champion scotch pies. Colin was just about to put the pies in the oven. You hold it, hold it like that. Put your hand yeah. underneath it. Yep. Right. <laughs> make sure you don't. Yeah. It's going to be really hot, remember? Yeah. yeah. Get the peel, you put it underneath it, push it in, yeah, and just push it back quick. Yeah, okay? Pizza. Yeah. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> um, I'll just take them out and I'll show you. Wow! You put them, you put them in the oven, and when they come out of the oven, we have to make sure that uh, they're cooked properly in the middle. So what we do is we look at the pie shell. The pie shell is cooked. 
nice and golden, that's them ready. And this is just one of yeah. many. <laughs> wow, that looks so cool. A few pies have come out of there, Colin, eh? Oh, yeah. Usually at this point, the, the girls in the shop are shouting for hot pies for the customers, so as soon as they come out of the oven, I'll have to pack them up as well. And every pie has to be checked. Have to be checked on the bottom, just to make sure. Everyone's okay. And what are you looking for, Colin? Just making sure there's, there's, they're cooked, basically. The shells are beautiful. And they're not burnt. They're not da any dark they're part? Not, not too dark, yeah. But then you get, you get people coming in asking for... Well-fired ones. Well-fired pies, yeah. We don't burn pies, we just well-fire them. For the customers, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> And every, every customer's got a different taste. When did you start making pies, Colin? Today. No, no, I mean in your, in your career. Oh, when I was um, 21. I started my apprenticeship making pies. But I've never had a, a good pie like this before. These are um, the best pies I've ever had. And I've been in a few bakeries. That's wonderful. And off to the shop. And off to the shop. It Can't goes, get yeah. fresher than that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Hot pies. All right, girls, here we go. A hot Scottish pie. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Out in the street. Wow. That is the best pie I have ever had. And that crust is so crispy. And some moist in the middle. I know. Murray's gets their meat from DJ Lindsay and Son, a butcher shop just down the road. Before popping into Lindsay's, we ventured 10 minutes outside the city to Glogburn Farm Shop. I wanted April and Megan to experience some of the fresh foods typical of a warm Scottish summer. These are one of the staples of Scottish cooking. This is a, a new Ayrshire potato, so it's the new crop, and everybody's desperate for these to come out because they're just so wonderful. Very, very tasty, very rich in nutrients. What do you do with these? You can, you, generally they just scrub them and boil them, and then you can use them for saute lyonnaise potatoes or saute potatoes, but mostly it's just boiled. Do they come out at a certain time of the year? Or? Yeah, always July, August. Everybody's waiting for them to arrive. It's like a big celebration. Chefs are just, they're on every menu, every plate. But what really interested in is the, is the fruit. This is the local fruit. So for example, you have gooseberries here, if you want to grab one. These are beautiful. And then blackberries. But the real important thing about this area, Perthshire, is their berries, raspberries and strawberries. So I bought some and we're just going to go try them, okay? okay. Let's go. Now this truly is the essence of summer in Scotland. Well, they haven't had much of a summer this year, but the strawberries are really beautiful. They taste so much different from everything else you try the other kind of strawberry. Okay, let's try these raspberries. This is, we used to make pies with these and they were so sweet. We just made pastry. We layered the raspberries on. We put pastry on top, no sugar, and we baked them. Look at them. Mm. Wow, it's so good. I like the strawberries myself. Okay, this is mine. <laughs> Coming up on Cooking with Angus. It's a very, very simple recipe, but haggis has never been a complicated thing. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? 
I was ready to build a career. I traded taking notes in a classroom for hands-on learning. I found a program where I can follow my passion. What I'm saving on low tuition will pay off if I transfer to a university. And I know the skills I'm learning will build a better community. All those reasons make GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I chose GRCC because it's close to home and I like the campus. Because it's affordable. Because I love the atmosphere. Because they have a great photography program. Because they have a great psychology program. It has the same activities as any other college. Because I can get my general classes out the way. Because it's quality, affordable education. Because it's close to home. Because I love Grand Rapids. For medical assisting. Because it'll kickstart my future. At CC, it's a very diverse campus. Meeting people who uh, come from more diverse environments and communities. GRCC best prepared me, I think, for the university. Like, it wasn't a big jump to where the university had harder classes. In order to advance myself, I needed to have at least an associate's degree. And it doesn't kill your pocketbook. I'm sure we saved thousands. I think it's a better experience. This is a lot more personal. I'm glad I came. DJ Lindsay and Son is a butcher shop in Perth, Scotland. Lindsay's speciality is the national dish of Scotland, haggis. Haggis is a savoury pudding with sheep's heart, lungs and liver, minced with onion, oatmeal, suet, seasoning and mixed with stock, all encased in the sheep's stomach. Beaten Lindsay is the fifth generation family owner. He showed us how his shop makes this famous food. Here we're a traditional family butcher shop. We buy our animals from the farms. It's not just bought in boxes. So if you come in here, you'll see what's been done this morning. Tomorrow there's going to be another two beasts coming in tomorrow. They'll get boned out and that's working up towards the weekend. That's kind of the, the way we work here. <laughs> The first step is boiling the sheep's pluck, which is the heart, liver, and lungs. In here, there's lungs, hearts, and livers. Yep. And how long have they been cooking, Lindsay? Just for about a couple hours. That's sheep's heart, lung, and that's liver. Right, so when we take these through, we'll mince these. So you'd poach them just in water for a just couple of... straight water, there's no seasoning in at this point at all. It's just straight in like that. And then boil it. And as you can imagine, when it's boiling at this stage, it's not the nicest smell in the world. All right. Right, now leave this up here and I'll just go and get some of this water. The water from boiling the pluck will be used later with the mince. Right, what we've got here, I've got your plucks on the top there. We'll mince them in a minute and we've got the suet there. Right, so we've got suet, onions, oatmeal, salt, and then that's the spices. So the first thing we're going to do here is dry up, mix up the dry ingredients. Well, we'll mix the spices up first and then mix that into the suet. Then make the dry mix, then mince the plucks into the suet. Right. So that's what we'll just do now. To mix the spices with the suet, Beaton has to mince the suet first. It's a very, very simple recipe, but haggis has never been a complicated thing. You think it's a very old-fashioned when you didn't have complicated recipes and everyone's messed about and souped it up and it doesn't need it. As Americans would say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's exactly right. Right, so that's what's got our our suet in there, and then we'll get our dry ingredients here. Once it all mixes together, that's when it starts smelling good. As any good chef would say, dry ingredients first, then you don't get clumps of the seasoning all in different places when it's wet. Right. Pop that in there. Now this, this may spin out. This will this will probably so be better stepping back a wee bit for this. Right, 
So, I've got this. We'll bring it in the middle of the floor here so you can see it better. No problem. Now, just let me mix this up. And you can do the honours with onions there. There we go. Oh, that smells good, Beaton. You start getting the, the more the smell of the onions and the, the lights through it. But now, if you just let me in there and get some of the, the juices from when it's cooking. But once that hits the oatmeal, it's going to start to thicken up a little bit. It starts to, yeah, yeah. That's when there's wow, not. Wow, it's, it's very, very simple. The recipes are just so easy. It's just the lights, the oatmeal, the onion. Now, you're just so testing it there for. That's it, yeah. To see how moist it is. There's no exact recipe to. It's all in the hands. Yep. When the filling is ready, Beaton puts it into the filler. Using either artificial casing or actual sheep stomach, he fills the haggis, making it ready for the final step, the steam oven. Were you born in Perth, Beaton? I was born above the shop. Really? Mm -hmm. I was born in the window above the bedroom, above the shop, on the first floor. <laughs> <laughs> so you were born with the smell of haggis in your nostrils? Oh, goodness. I don't like keeping it close to home, eh? Nothing like it. <laughs> Beaten rolled the haggis into the steamer, the final step for Scotland's national dish. Soon, it'll turn into a beautiful and very significant symbol of Scotland. Right, so that's that in. I'll be in there for 45 minutes. Job done. Yeah. Haggis made. Right. Thank you very much for coming and visiting my little shop. Coming up on Cooking with Angus. It was like a whirlwind. I don't remember the first couple of days, but it was like in and out and off the plane and taping and eating everything. <laughs> My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? Because I was ready to take my future into my own hands, and GRCC gave me that opportunity. Because the money that I'm saving on the low cost of tuition, I'll use to earn my bachelor's degree. Because I'm making connections to build my career. Because while I share my ideas with other students, I'm pushed to challenge my limits by my professors. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I love GRCC because I love Grand Rapids. I chose GRCC because it's close to home. I can take my time to decide what I want to do with my life. I love this campus because it's an affordable way to take basic classes. I chose GRCC because it was the best place to get reacquainted with school. Because I love being downtown. Because it's military friendly. So I can pursue my dream of being a dental hygienist. Because it offers the same educational experience as universities. My students and I learned a lot from the gracious people of Perth, Scotland. But our incredible culinary journey was now over. Back in the United States at Grand Rapids Community College, I sat down with Megan and April, nearly a year after our trip, to reminisce and see how they were doing. How did you feel about um, doing something in front of the camera all the time and all that crew around about you and the cameras flashing on and off. And yeah, it was a little nerve wracking at first because you were used to just having a normal conversation and not a camera in your face. And then you kind of just got used to it and didn't even realize it by the end. That's what I thought. Yeah, that was pretty hectic. The first um, couple days that we taped, I was really nervous. <laughs> and uh, then you kind of get used to it. What do you specifically remember about Polia. I remember, I like the Alborobello, the all the Truly houses. I think that was my favorite. Just the history and 
I was watching the episode with my family, and they were all, like, really interested in that part because just the history behind it and how we went to a restaurant that was in one of those, just preserved, and you don't really get that kind of, like, history with restaurants around here in the U.S. that much, so it was really cool to see. Yeah, I think for me, my favorite part was the olive trees with all the twists in them. And, and their age. And their yeah, age crazy. and counting them. But all the twists and turns in the trees is the one thing that always stays with me. It was pretty surreal, the whole experience, to go and it was like a whirlwind. I don't remember the first couple of days because it was like in and out and off the plane and mm. taping. and Having it, being able to just watch it on television, it makes it the memory just so much more powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, there were plenty of things. Like when I watched the episode about the mozzarella, I forgot that he, we were all trying to figure out what he was shaping. That's we were like, it's a donkey. It's a horse. It's, I don't know what it is. I was like, no, it's a zebra. <laughs> that was like a, a night that I think. I think that was my favorite. My night. favorite for sure. I think I'll remember that night forever. Yeah, that was definitely my favorite dinner of yeah. all time. They were so welcoming. They just oh, they were treated amazing. us like family. Which is... When we were up the close and we were having the, the black pudding and the haggis and that. That, to me, was really special. Mm-hmm. You know, because the Edinburgh is such a, an incredible city, but just the little closest. Yeah, that was cool for me, at least, to see, because you're from Scotland, and to have you there as, like, our tour guide, that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it brings me back to experiences now. If I need dough, I, th- I actually physically think about the woman needing dough the night we were making orecate and all the muscle that she put into it as she was rolling it. And I, when I, I made dough last night when I was rolling pappardelle pasta, and I just kept thinking every time I make this pasta dough, I think about this woman and all the effort that she put into the dough mm-hmm. and how amazing it tasted and how easy it was, but it's a lot of work. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things I took away is just the relationships that we made. Because I still keep in touch with Linda and Nicola, and it's just crazy to think that this experience has led to connections with so many people in Italy and Scotland. It's mm. crazy. So, what have you been up to since you came back? Planning my next trip <laughs> somewhere so I can eat some more food in a different culture. I got a new job as a sous chef at Muskegon Country Club, so I'm really excited to start that. You've been busy. I've been very busy. I actually went back to Italy. And yeah, now I'm working at the school. Yeah, and graduation yeah. is coming up. I'll That's be calling exciting. your names out and mm-hmm. you'll be coming up, which is really like the end. This is something that we'll carry for the rest of our lives. Good. And we'll never, ever forget it. Keep in touch with me. That's the end of our journey. 